Now you have your AI generated photo here in Photoshop and you want to remove the background. So you may click on the image layer and choose the remove background button. But once we see this load, you'll see there's obviously a problem. Only a fraction of what we actually wanted to remove gets removed. And we wanted an example that looks more like this instead. So how can we get this result instead of this bad result that we just had with the remove background button? Well, the solution is with a simple technique called channels, which is arguably one of the most useful ways to cut out complex AI images or any graphic for that matter. If you're dealing with a more realistic photo where there's edges that are like hair or fur, I'll leave some resources below that will be more useful for you instead. But to understand how channels work, let's go and start fresh with this image. Back to our original starting point, we can begin by accessing the channels panel, which if you don't see, go up to window and channels to access it. Now we want to click between the individual channels and find the one that has the most contrast between your background and the object that you want to keep. In this case, that is the red channel. So I'll select that and now duplicate it by clicking and dragging it to the new channel icon. This this will create a duplicate copy of that channel that we can now edit to push this photo to be 100% black and 100% white. Once we do that, we'll be able to create a really sharp selection of all the intricate details within this image. The first step in this process while your duplicated channel is selected is to just press Command or Control L to bring up the Levels dialog box. We'll start by bringing up the shadows to make anything that is slightly gray fully black. We'll then do the opposite with the highlights dragging inwards to do a similar thing, but now making anything that is white or light gray fully white. You can continue to push this until as much as possible is turned fully white, but if we zoom in, you might notice that there is going to still be some problems with some of the darker tones within your graphic not fully getting removed here. That's totally okay, just continue to push this until you are starting to have those problems and then we'll click okay. The next step to remove these little bits that are left over to make them fully white is to go ahead and use our dodge tool in this case. Going to the burn or dodge tool, I can find that here under the keyboard shortcut O. I'll go to the dodge tool since I want to push the gray areas into fully white. If you're wanting to push the areas into fully black, then go ahead and use the burn tool instead. But for this case, I'll use the dodge tool and then I'll set the range to highlights and the exposure to 100%. If you were trying to use the burn tool, you would choose the shadows range and the same exposure. Now with that good to go, we can just paint over any of those areas that are kind of like a lighter or darker gray and it will push them to become 100% white as we paint over them a couple of times like so. So take a moment just to look around your graphic and paint over any of the areas that you want to push to fully white in this case. Once finished with either your dodge or burn adjustments, you should have a 100% white graphic and a 100% black background. With this good to go, we can now hold command or control and click on the thumbnail of that channel copy. Doing so, we'll select the edge between black and white, which means we can go back to our layers panel, click on the image layer, and then add a layer mask to cut out the background like so. What we're left with is all of the intricate details that might have not been selected very well with more automatic selection methods. But now the beauty of this is since it has a transparent background, if you didn't like the color of how your graphic looked in relation to a new background, we can easily change that as well just by going up to the hue saturation adjustment layer, adding a clipping mask so it only affects this particular image, and then we can go and enable colorize for example. And this way we can very quickly go and change the stylization and color of that cutout to whatever we feel like works best in its new home. So that way you can kind of get some nice looks if you have a relatively simple graphic that only has some shadows and things. This isn't gonna work very well if you need to maintain a ton of different colors. But ultimately, if you're needing to constantly remove backgrounds in Photoshop, there are some key selection tools that are very worthwhile to know and a few key principles to selections as well that will make your life easier. I break down what all of those are in my free selections quick start guide that you can get for free in the description or pinned comment below. It breaks down everything you need to find confidence with selections in Photoshop, so hopefully processes like this one are a little bit easier in the future. Again, you can grab your free copy in the description or pinned comment down below. Now, if you're wanting to deal with more complex cutouts when there's like fur and hair and things like that, sometimes these methods aren't going to work. Instead, you're gonna have to use the method 
methods that I talk about in this video right here, where I break down how you can deal with really complex selections, even if it's against a difficult background, whether it's a regular photo or an AI generated image. Again, just click the video right here to watch that, and I hope to see you there next.